Hi, in today's episode, we put the bearings in the hub. Hello, welcome to Jerry Motorsport. I'm Jerry. Let's get started. Hi, welcome to the channel. Today, we're putting the bearings back in the hub. Uh, this is the hub that was uh, cleaned up. Just got to push those bearings in. I haven't got anything large enough to push in, I don't think, so I'm going to have to tap them in. It's uh, a quite a laborious process, but we'll get on with that. Put the bearings in, and then uh, once they're on, we should be able to fit the hub to the axle. Tapered roller bearings, rather than normal ball bearings. The large one at first, and because this will sit on the studs when I'm trying to tap this in, I'm just going to rest it on a block of wood and pop it in. And then we're just going to gently tap that in to position. Okay, that's the inner bearing all the way down to its seat at the bottom there. Now I can flip that over and I can fit that outer bearing. You can hear when it hits the end. And that is that one, seated all the way down. Ready for dry fit and testing of the end float now. Okay, the next thing to sort out is the uh, inner part of the bearing has to go on the axle. Now it should just slide on and uh, hit the end like it does on the old axle. Drop on like that and you can hear it tapping on the end. I just need to get some wet and dry fine sandpaper just to rub it down a little bit just so the bearing slides on nicely. I'm also going to check the outer bearing which is currently a bit tight as well. Make sure that goes on. So. Okay, it's going on nice and freely now. You can see it's got a nice shiny finish on it now, so hopefully this bearing should now go on. I should hear a little knock. There you that's, that's touching the back. Uh, I'm not assembling finally until I know what the end float is, so this is going to be the first, first stage. So, inner bearing on, spacer with its, its spacer in a race, and the hub goes on. And we put in Outer bearing. There we go. Still free. And all I've just put is a tiny bit of light oil on the bearings just to do this. And then I'm going to tighten this nut up until that bearing drags. This plate is still there at the moment. Tighten. Tighten, not loosen. There we are. Bearing's just starting to drag. So now I need to measure the end float on this. Okay, so I've got my dial gauge uh, attached to the hub, and I'm just seeing if there's any end float at all. The answer there is none. So essentially, it's the same as the MGB setup with these taper bearings, and you have to have an end float to um, keep the bearings from wearing too fast. So what I need to do is add some shims between the sets of bearings, so I'll do it on the end of the spacer. So taking it out, the hub and the outer bearing, place it between the bearing inner race. We're going to reassemble this, tighten up the nut again. I'm tightening quite a lot now and I've still got movement in the bearing. I'm looking for a bit of end float because the bearing is now a little looser. Still haven't got anything, so I'm going to put the three thousandth uh, spacer in now. Washer and the castellated nut again. So that nut is pretty tight. I don't know what torque I'm putting in at the moment. I'll have to torque it, but it's pretty tight. Don't want to over torque it, so I'm just gonna set the dial gauge again 
There we are, five thousandths. So slightly one thousandth too much. Five, and there's also the possibility of this gauge only reads to that level of accuracy. Okay, so that's the shims done. Now I'm not too sure uh, which arrangement I should keep with this. Um, it feels very loose with that uh, three and the five in there, and, and that hub was just spinning and spinning. And there was no resistance at all. Uh, obviously, it's going to be a bit more resistance when the grease is in. Um, it's just whether that is going to be a problem or not. Uh, clearly, it's not moving very much. Uh, just my dial gauge doesn't appear to be able to do anything less than five thousandths of an inch in accuracy. So it's either going zero or five, and I'm looking for between two and four. So I don't know whether the five that I'm getting now is six or possibly four. So I'm going to go with that. So next I'm going to pack the bearings with grease. Um, but before, actually before I do that, I must remember that I must put on the dust shield that I did manage to renovate a certain amount. Um, and then before the hub goes back on, I've got to get the new brake disc on the back there ready to put the caliper on. So if I do this in the wrong order, I'll be taking it all apart again. Then we'll torque up the axle nut on the end here and put the dust shield on and then I can get on to fitting the brakes and then I'll be able to bleed the brakes ready for putting the wheel back on and then that, that will be this side done. Right, right before we forget I'm going to put the dust shield on, the brake disc shield, whatever you want to call these. Uh, I managed to recover it quite well from uh, its uh, sorry state that was in before, so that's good. Okay, another important step I have to do before putting the hub back on is to put the oil seal on the back here. But in order to do that, I've got to put the bearing back in and that will need greasing. One packed bearing. I can't find my rubber mallet, so I'll be careful with the standard hammer. Get it started, I'll protect it with cardboard. That's going to put a little smear of grease on the seal to help it go on the hub. Also the axle. Okay, before we go too far, I'm going to fit the brake disc before that gets forgotten. Um, because it's not like a modern car where you can put the brake disc on after you've put the hub on. You've got to do it beforehand, so uh, need to do that now. I'm going to put some copper grease around the interfaces between that and the hub so that they don't stick on like it did when I tried to take it apart. Okay, time to torque that up, and that needs to be 43 foot-pounds for those discs, those disc to hub bolts. Not the most elegant way of doing that. I've got the, back, the inner bearing and the pack shim for the spacer on there, plus the seal at the back. Spacer. And the the bearing has the shims stuck to the front of it, so that's the shims, then the bearing. Okay. Got the washer, and finally, castellated nut. Now, I'll torque up this nut. Right, torque setting for this nut is 46 foot pounds according to my manual. Uh, so, we're going to do that, and then you've got to tighten it through to the next hole. So, I've got holes there and there. So, we'll see uh, how this goes. Not very tight at all, is it? There we are. And it's already lining up with a hole. So, just check I've got that the right setting 46. Yeah, 46. That is talked up. So to pin in. Okay. And finally, the grease cap. That is the hub assembled. Right, so we're doing really well now on our suspension rebuild. We've got the frontline suspension upper arm back in with the 
offset uh, shock absorber, new kingpin, new axle, uh, rebuilt hub with new tapered bearings, a new brake disc, and that is now ready for new calipers and new brake pads. So that will be uh, next time we'll be finishing this off, putting the brakes on, and then I'll be able to do the other side. Yay! Okay, that's it for today's episode. Thank you very much for watching. We'll see you again next time. Bye for now. Bye.